My name is Jamie Balsad and I'll be presenting the Four Seasons Gardening webinar today. So let's jump right into it. Spring ephemerals are also called short-lived flowers. Um, they get their name because they have these relatively short blooming times. So these are perennials that grow in the spring, hence the name spring ephemerals. They flower and they set seed relatively quickly. So they're often dormant by midsummer when their leaves die completely back as well. So Pictured here is an early summer dappled light forest after some leaves have started to come in on the trees and sunlight is coming through them, but there's still some ephemeral, ephemeral foliage growing. So spring ephemerals have to complete most of their life cycle in the early spring before the trees and the understory shrubs leaf out and take over most of that available sunlight. So as you can imagine, this is a really tough time to be growing outside and growing as a plant. Soil temperatures are low, weather's really unpredictable, and there's just a few pollinators foraging. So these plants are adapted to that kind of unpredictable, kind of cold environment. So they start growing roots in the fall and the winter to be prepared to fully emerge above ground in the spring. So that's here pictured with these little roots. And so in the early spring, they grow, they flower, and then they set seed. And the leaves usually die back by the late spring or early summer. So the fall and winter below ground growth really depends on the nutrients that were stored the previous spring. These plants usually have relatively short roots and root hairs, um, but some research has shown that these plants actually have really extensive mycorrhizal associations to increase water and nutrient uptake. So as temperatures increase and sunlight becomes less available in the late spring and in the, and in the summer, their growth slows down and those nutrients are stored underground. And that's when those plants begin to die back. So there is some conflicting information out there and conflicting opinions as to if spring ephemerals are just a special type of spring flower or a spring bulb. Some publications might say that tulips and daffodils are actually non-native ephemerals. So I just wanted to give you some information so you can get to know the differences and the similarities between the two. So both spring ephemerals and spring bulbs are favored by mammals like deer, and that's due to increased deer populations. And since both flowers are some of the earlier food sources that are available. Ephemeral flowers are relatively short lived. Like I said, they complete their life cycle in just a couple of months. One major difference is that ephemeral foliage dies back in the early summer, late spring, whereas spring bulbs foliage can persist for much longer. Now there really, there are some exceptions. So if the environmental conditions are favorable and the spring ephemerals are getting enough light and protection from the heat, you might see ephemerals like may apple foliage, later on in the summer, in the midsummer. Um, another difference is the underground storage organ. So bulbs are just that. There's stored bulbs underground, whereas spring ephemerals can have a variety of underground storage organs. Some are bulbs, but some are tubers, some are fleshy rhizomes. And then there's some maintenance differences as well. So I don't recommend fertilizing spring ephemerals ever as it can lead to really leggy growth and only watering them during establishment if you're planting them in your yard or in serious cases of drought. So spring, spring ephemerals should be planted in high organic matter soils, whereas spring bulbs like tulips and daffodils can be fertilized and watered throughout the season. So when do these plants grow? Some spring ephemerals like skunk cabbage can be seen growing when there's still snow on the ground in early February. Hepatica can be seen in early March. Spring Beauty, Bloodroot, Virginia Bluebells grow from March through May. 
Dutchman's breeches and false root anemone grow from April through May, and plants like trillium, trout lily, and mayapple grow from April through June. So I'm going to talk about a lot of these plants later in the presentation, but here's a picture of what that environment might look like in the early spring. So this is a picture of a forest where there are spring ephemerals growing. You can see that there isn't any leaves on the trees yet, but if you could look really closely, there are small flowers growing. Now you might wonder where you can see these in Illinois or where you live. So Messenger Woods is known for its abundance of spring wildflowers as is Waterfall Glen Nature Preserves. So both of these areas have really beautiful spring blooms and you can see, but you can see spring ephemerals um, in many different places. You can see them most often in restored woods all over the state. So especially areas where understory invasive plants have been cleared, um, places with high organic matter, moist to music soils. And so since they do grow and bloom so quickly, visiting the woods from one week to the next can have completely different plants plants in bloom. So be aware though that these that temperature extremes at that time of year can lead to really unpredictable blooms. So the months on the previous slide that I mentioned is just a general estimate and you might want to visit the same location throughout the whole spring to see the different blooms. So since there are people on this webinar from all over Illinois and possibly the US, um, I was hoping that you would type into the chat your favorite hikes or spots to see spring ephemerals in your area. That way, um, as I'm presenting, folks that are here can read through the chat and we can read some of those out loud at the end as well. So if you wanna grow these in your yard, try and plant them in an area that most closely resembles and matches their, nat their natural growth habitat. So high organic matter soils, maybe under deciduous trees, don't plant them under evergreens as the soil is usually drier and there usually isn't enough light. Your biggest hurdle might not be finding the right habitat on your property, but probably sourcing the plants. So I will talk about different places to source plants and plant material um, and nurseries at the end of the presentation. It's also a really good idea to interplant these perennials with other plants that will grow in as the foliage dies back. So you don't wanna have you know, this beautiful showing of spring ephemerals in your yard at the beginning of the season, but once all that foliage dies back, you'll be left with kind of a hole in bare soil, maybe some dried leaves. And so it's a really good idea to interplant them with other things that will grow back, that will grow later. And then so gardeners usually wonder if they can grow these successfully. And the answer really is yes, with the right habitat, location, and some maintenance. So here are some tips for both planting and maintenance. So you do wanna plant these in clumps. Since a lot of spring ephemerals can be slow to grow, they can be slow to spread, you wanna plant masses of these plants to have a sense of fullness. Um, they don't need fertilizer or water. You wanna plant these in high organic matter areas that really mimic a woodland um, or a prairie. There are some prairie spring ephemerals. Um, and you want to water them only during establishment for the first couple of years or in times of serious drought, but that's it. They won't require much water. So it's really important to learn and recognize their growth habit. So some gardeners can be really worried or concerned, especially beginners, when these spring ephemerals, they look beautiful in the early spring, but then their leaves die back. And you just need to remember that that is normal. Um, that's normal for these plants, that's how, that's how they grow. And absolutely never collect plants in the wild as it's illegal, and it can really disrupt the natural habitat. So there are more nurseries now that are selling spring ephemerals um, due to their increased popularity. One of the handouts in your folder that you were emailed is a list of resources, including some mail order companies. So when you're planting spring ephemerals, 
seeds can be a really cheap root, but seeds grow slowly and you'll have to break the dormancy of the seed before it grows. So you'll have to do a little bit of research to understand exactly how to break that dormancy if you want it to grow right away. Nurseries sell potted plants in the spring or in the fall. If it's a little later in the spring, the above ground portion might be looking a little bit yellow, but the root mass is still alive. Remember, that's likely normal for that plant at that time of year. If you buy spring ephemerals online and you got them mailed, they will likely be bare root. So these bare root plants are dormant. There will be no top growth and they're usually packed in a moist packing material and they should be planted right away. So don't be alarmed if you, you know, order some plants in the mail and you get a brown mass of roots. Just follow the instructions carefully and you should have a plant that emerges in the following spring when the weather conditions are right. Okay, so now I'm going to go through some specific plants. And here's a picture of some spring ephemerals growing at the base of a tree. So the first one I want to talk about is skunk cabbage. This is one of the earliest of the spring ephemerals that emerges in February, late February. Um, and it gets its name because of how it looks and how it smells. So there are these tiny yellow flowers that are held on a spadix that's inside of this, this purple part right here. And this plant actually generates enough heat to melt the surrounding snow around it. So I've seen skunk cabbage where, yeah, there's still snow all around it, but these little cabbage-like things are growing from the ground. Skunk cabbage attracts carrion flies as its pollinators. And after it flowers, these large, smooth, cabbage-like, kind of bright green leaves develop and they'll grow above the flowers here. Next, we have Dutchman's breeches. So this is a really distinct flower. It's always so exciting when you first are able to see it and identify it. Um, it gets its common name because the individual blossoms here resembled pants or breeches. Um, they also have these leaflets that are really feathery. They look kind of fern-like and it's pollinated by bees. This is sometimes confused with a plant called squirrel's corn, which unfortunately I don't have a picture of, but the flowers for the flower for squirrel's corn is just a little bit narrower and it has it has more of a heart-shaped or rounded um, rounded shape. So instead of this pointed here, it would be a little rounder and it would be longer and narrower as well. Next, we have Jack in the Pulpit. So Jack in the Pulpit has really distinctive flowers, has really distinctive seeds. It flowers um, in June. So the outside of the flower, it could be green, or it could be purple striped as shown here. So this one's kind of green with some purpling on the edges. And here we have a striped looking one. The flower then turns into a cluster of green berries, which as they ripen, they turn into this bright red color. And so this is one of those exceptions. The flower is relatively short lived, but the persistent berries don't turn red until the fall or until the early fall. Um, so you'll be able to see this, the berries throughout the spring and summer, slowly turning from green to red. Um, in the fall, birds eat these seeds here. And then we have Virginia bluebells. So Virginia bluebells have these floppy leaves. These appear in March. Um, these plants are known for colonizing really bottomland soils. They have these clusters of bell-shaped flowers um, that grow and are right above the foliage. Um, the plant quickly dies back after blooming, so the blooms aren't around for that long. They have these showy pink to purplish clustered 
um, buds that open up into these pendulous blue flowers that kind of like hang down. So there's, they're kind of tubular here. They will, in your garden, if you were to plant these, um, they do reseed themselves, but only when the conditions are appropriate. And so they grow well in moist, well-drained soils, um, can grow in full to part shade, and it's really best to interplant bluebells with other perennials. Um, I see them in gardens planted amongst hostas or ferns or even annuals. So as that foliage dies back, um, there's something else that fills in that space. It really attracts a diverse number of pollinators, um, but I think a lot of people like to grow these in their yard because it's relatively rabbit resistant. And so they're not gonna die if a rabbit gets to it and they can be somewhat resistant to deer. Pictured here is false rue anemone. So this plant has white flowers. The flowers are bright, they're small, and it forms really large colonies and it kind of spreads through these creeping stems. So this plant prefers moist to well-drained woodland soils and especially those soils with leaf litter that's left on top. Um, it is really sensitive to invasive plants. So invasive like garlic mustard or non-native shrubs, if that's growing, you're not gonna see this plant. And so fall through anemone is much more common and, and has, so it has these fall five petal like sepals that are white, they're rounded in shape. Um, it is often confused with rue anemone that looks really similar, but rue anem anemone can have sometimes have different numbers of petal like sepals. So sometimes it might have more than five. False rue anemone attracts bees and it also attracts flies. This next plant is one of my favorites. Um, this is yellow trout lily. So yellow trout lily sometimes forms these extensive colonies of these long mottled elliptical leaves. So if you look closely, you can see the different coloring on the leaves here. And you might see just like a huge area that only has leaves with only a few flowers because sometimes trout lilies can take upwards of eight years to flower. So you'll have have lots of leaves, but only a few of the plants will have the flowers on it because it's really, really slow to flower. So it likes full sun to part shade and it's pollinized, but it's pollinated by bees. So there's the yellow version, but then there's also white trout lily. These flowers point downwards, as you can see, and you can see a better kind of idea what I mean by that modeled coloring with some brown, light green, and dark green coloring in the leaves. So what's really awesome about spring eph ephemerals is that since these plants all grow in colder weather, um, they can actually help to hold on to nutrients for throughout the season. So the nutrients in the early spring that would just run off as the snow is melting during this time of year, that is what plants like trout lily are using to grow. And so as the leaves die back, some of those nutrients are of course stored in the underground storage organs, but some of those nutrients are released back into the soil for other plants to use. So in the summer, more nutrients are available for the other plants that are growing because of colonies of trout lily that are growing, that have grown earlier in the season. And then next we have May apples. So May apples grow in large dense colonies. These spread relatively quickly. Um, they have these large bowl shaped um, white flowers that grow right underneath these umbrella shaped leaves. So the flower would be like hanging down below here. 
the umbrella leaves of the mayapple look like a miniature forest, um, especially when there's many of them growing. The leaves are glossy and they ideally grow in part to full shade. They bloom from April through May and can self-seed, but also spread through rhizomes. They do tolerate some drier soil conditions, some periods of doubt, drought, especially when their flowering is complete. And so this might be one of those plants that the foliage persists a little, a little bit later into the season, like through June, for example. So the fruit after it flowers would also be right underneath, but I don't think I have ever seen a fruit because they are usually eaten up by mammals right away. One time while I was hiking, I did see a bunny resting under like a whole area of these May apples. So it was resting underneath the shade, which was pretty adorable and pretty fun to see. Next, we have bloodroot. So these blooms are really fleeting. They can, they last only a few days sometimes. There's this really vibrant white flower with this green lobed leaf at the base. Um, there's some really amazing contrast um, with this plant. And so you can see in these pictures, like we have this really bright white flower and green leaf with the brown leaves in the background. So it can be pretty striking. It gets its common name because of the rhizomes. So the rhizomes have this orange red color when they're cut. The flowers um, are really fleeting, but sometimes the leaves can stick around throughout the season, depending on the environmental conditions. And then next we have shooting star. So this is one of those prairie spring ephemerals. It can tolerate some drier soils. So it is pollinated by bees. And you can see this amazing picture that Nancy took with the, with the bee that's resting right on that flower right there. So it grows, um, from, it grows about 12 to 18 inches tall and has these drooping, flowers where that um, point downwards, but the petals kind of like shoot upwards where it gets, that's how it gets its common name shooting star. And then the last plant I'm going to talk about today is Virginia Spring Beauty. And so this plant has delicate small flowers, small blooms that can range in color from white to slightly pinkish with these pink stripes or pink venation in the petals. So it's a really short flower and short plant. It only grows to about six inches tall. So people sometimes let it grow in their lawns. Um, it can be, it can tolerate some mowing as well. And it's a really plentiful native plant. It forms these really dense stands. And so it can act as a nice ground cover and it really does attract bees and butterflies. So I mentioned um, that you might want to plant these in your yard, but where would you buy them? Luckily, there's a lot more nurseries and places growing native plants and native spring ephemerals. Um, so this website by the Illinois Native Plant Society has a list of native plant nurseries. And so I will put that link in the chat for everybody. Also, one of the resources in the folder that you've got a link to is also has some native plant resources. There's Often also many forest preserve areas that will have a plant sale either in the spring or the fall. And if you're lucky, they also might be selling some spring ephemerals as well. And so they are a little tougher to find, but they are available and can be a really great addition to your yard or to your garden. So again, my name is Jamie Balsad, um, and I'm a horticulture educator in Chicago. Here's my contact information. If you ever need to get a hold of me or have any other follow-up questions, this program is being recorded and will be posted to the University of Illinois Extension's horticulture page, um, YouTube page, where you can find our 
this where you'll be able to find this program once it's closed captioned, but then also be able to find recordings of past four season programs as well. And so here is a QR code that you can scan for a link that will take you towards the Qualtrics evaluation for today's session. I'd really appreciate that. 